Hey, hello everyone, happy June. This is Melissa with The Creative Season. And today I thought it would be fun to paint one of my very favorite flowers, a sunflower. Sunflower has popped up a lot in my paintings and I just love how happy sunflowers are. I love how sturdy they are. So I was doing a painting this morning because I wanted to add some detail, but as you know, I often will get so involved with the quick painting and then it kind of gets a little bit messy. So we're just gonna do, um, a sunflower. I might do a couple on this bigger page today, but I wanted just to show you all the varieties and really the joy of painting these sunflowers. And I'll talk as we start to sketch it out a little bit more. So over here, and I'm going to just change the light just a little bit. I just want everyone to be able to see. Finally, the um, we've had a lot of landscaping at this where I live around the area and it's been so loud. So we had a quiet morning where I felt like, okay, Let's record here. Now I wanted to show out my uh, show you a sunflower. My brother had bought me flowers, which was so, so sweet of him. And as you can see here, I just wanted to point out whenever I'm wanting to make something look like the thing, but maybe not exactly like it, it's hard to get realistic. I do more of an interpretive, but one of the things I'll do is the size, right? The shape. So with the sunflower, one, one of the things that makes it so distinguishable is we've got this the very large um, uh, middle part and um, with all the seeds inside. And so what I've noticed is that this guy is actually, it is bigger if I put my two fingers here and then also do the shape of the, the petals, it's actually bigger than my petals. So I'm going to use that as my... Um, the way I'm going to map out my flower to make it look like a sunflower. And that is just looking at the basic shapes is one of the way, whether I'm drawing little cats or when we did watermelon last week um, or the sunflowers, it's just a way that I'm able to make it look like resembling. So someone looks at it and goes, oh, that's a sunflower. So um, I am gonna go ahead and I think in this picture, I'm gonna do three of them. So in this one over here, I just did one, which is just fun sometimes to work on a single one. And sometimes it's fun to do a group. So I'm gonna go ahead and I, I'm just gonna start with my my bulbs here. And then I'll do different different heights, right? Because that makes, makes it interesting. And so I'm gonna then go ahead and start just quickly sketching out my petals. And you'll notice too, another thing with the sunflower is that the petals start really small and they widen out and then they come back really small. And as well as we've got these little, because I don't even know what to call these guys, but we've got these little green things and their little pointies on the end. And that's going to be another distinguishing mark. So I'm going to make my petals here and I'm kind of really, what I'm doing is I want to just give myself some landmarks so I don't get excited and carried away and make the petals excessively big, which sometimes I do, or excessively small. I'm also going to point out there is an awful lot of kinds of sunflowers. So when you go to the store or if you have sunflower fields near you and you start, especially at the store, because sometimes they'll have different kinds, you'll see big ones and little ones. And you'll have some that have the dark, the really dark center, and others that have like this one. Um, this is more of a yellow. Even if it's as it's getting old, it's it's still more of a yellow. They're not getting really dark. And we can see the green inside here too. So I'm gonna kind of, again, just think about all these things. Also, this sunflower, it's kind of falling apart a little bit because it's got older. And I thought it's kind of fun too that that these are not all perfect, right? And sunflowers, I think they're just, they're such a happy flower. And I am amazed, so I live in Northern California and um, it is just blistering hot. I think Texas and Arizona and Nevada have beat us in heat, but nonetheless, it is hot, hot, hot. And I'm amazed at sunflowers because no matter how hot it gets, they just flourish. They flourish in the heat. Okay, let's make sure with our stems that we, they're not, they're such big, and they're such big flowers, right? So with your stem, the stems are thick. So if we look at the stem right here, it is a nice, it's a nice solid stem that's holding up what you need it because the sunflower heads, they're heavy. Of course, I'm not doing as much driving now and I'm not going up and down the highway like I used to do for my day job. But when I was doing that, I would pass through a lot of agricultural fields in, in this late summer there would be fields of sunflowers and they are gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna kind of just outline this. If you wanna pause the video while you finish your sketch, please do. 
I'm going to probably be a little bit more whimsical with this one and then I am going to go back to the other one. Hopefully you can see that I know I do light with my pencil because I just don't like it to have that pencil come through. So I'll show you here. I have gone pretty, pretty light. I'm going to move it over just a bit so you can see that. Okay, fantastic. So I'm going to back up now just a little bit. Okay, so for colors for this, yellow, green, brown, and orange. Now I will say you can mix, you can get different kinds of yellows. You can mix what you have. Um, I actually did clean my palette, but this is how I am with my palette. So over here, I have yellow ochre, which is a darker yellow. It's almost a, it's a muted muted yellow that's really really lovely it's almost the color of wheat i have over here this is my cadmium yellow which is a brighter more of a primary yellow and i had mixed in some that's a kind of a red orange which i'm going to show you in just a minute and then over here is a lemon yellow and i think i have a cadmium as you can see i just have all my yellows together i'm going to end up using all of them now if you don't have a variety of yellows it's super easy to make different colors just grab a red and mix it with some yellow in the corner and that's going to create a more of a vibrant orange um, and grab if you don't have like a yellow ochre put a little bit of brown in the corner and i am going to be using a lot of this my favorite ross um, ross sienna and that's just a nice warm brown, but use whatever brown you have and you can mix that with the yellow and that's gonna create a nice warm yellow too. So that's gonna give us the variety that we have. Over here, this is a red orange and then I have a real light orange. If you had to choose, I'd probably go with the red orange because if you notice on our sunflower or go with the red if you have a red, this is a pretty vibrant yellow and it's very, very warm. It's almost a harvest color of yellow. And so I usually do that at the end, but again, we're painting and you can create the color combination of whatever you would like. And if you noticed whether you're seeing sunflowers in the farmer's market, I'm going to start doing some of my painting here or at the store, you're going to notice all sorts of different colors of yellow and yellow orange and brownish yellow, um, sunflowers. There's lots of hybrids. There's lots of sizes and uh, there's just quite the variety. So once again, I'm just going to do some outlining here and then I'm going to go jump on the inside really quick too. And then I'm also going to paint in kind of those green pointy things. I just never know what to call them. They're not petals. There's something else and hopefully you can see this okay. And again, if you want to just do one, that's really fun too. I had a lot of fun just focusing on one. Um, I've been working on, I have really loved, um, I don't know if you've seen the stickers that have popped up but creating stickers from some of the art has been a blast, probably because I am such a sticker enthusiast. I was the kid growing up, I spent all of my allowance and extra money on Lisa Frank. And those of you who are of a certain age, remember Lisa Frank and all the neon bright colors of the ponies and the horses and the puppies and the ice cream cones. It was everything a child created in their imaginary world. And Lisa Frank got it on paper and sticker and stationery and colors that just sang to us. Okay, so let's go in the middle here. Now, if you wanted to do more traditional, you could do a brown middle. I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna use green, but I'm not gonna color it completely in green. So we've got our nice big sunflower head here, the face, and I am gonna do just green dots in the middle here and in the middle of this one. Now, normally what happens with me is I get so excited that I don't give them time to dry and then we don't get the speckle effect. So I am working on this one. Sometimes if you're working on multiple sunflowers, it forces you to create that dry time. I was talking a little bit, I think I touched on, um, and we're gonna do a couple of these green, these are really interesting green, non-petal pointy things that are very much a part of sunflowers. And on this one, I'm actually going to do a couple of them, just like on this sunflower. I realize I interrupted myself. My sister says I do that all the time. I stop what I'm saying and then continue on. But um, one of the things that I love about nature, and sunflowers are a great example, is how we find beauty. But it's not perfect. Um, I think in our culture, it's so interesting. There's this anticipation of flawlessness, but nature shows us the most beautiful things and often they're not flawless. There's seasons, there's growth, there's a life, there's a, definitely a peak, but you notice that, I'm, see I'm pulling off a, a petal here. 
it's not perfect though. There's always an unevenness. Um, there's a ruggedness a lot of times in nature. There's a fierceness to it. You know, the sunflower is such an interesting flower because it it has its peak and it's huge and then it falls over. It always made me sad. My mom used to grow them. That might be too why I love them and I love them. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of green on my stems. I'm not gonna color in, paint in the whole thing, just all the way down. But I loved how sunflowers retained a, just a regalness and a beauty throughout their whole life cycle. Not all flowers will do that. Like kind of about the time a rose wilts, it's just not looking so great. But there's something about sunflowers that even as they kind of go through their winter season, where their end of their lifespan has come, they just do it with such a, I don't know, there's just such a regalness to them and a nobility. As if they realize they've had their day in the sun and they've served, done, served their purpose and now they just kind of finish up. Now, I don't have a sunflower leaf, but if you look on Pinterest or look at a magazine or look at the store, their leaves are nice and fat, which I love too. They're very, just very thick. So if you want to add leaves and remember, because in nature, usually everything is in odd numbers, I'm going to go ahead and make odd number leaves on each of my, okay. We're going to make these a little bit looser too, so then I can come in and just add in some other colors and it'll just drip, drop, and it'll be beautiful. Okay. Get some more paint there. Now I'm going to go in with another color of yellow so I can start adding in some more detail. And we're actually on this one, we'll make five. There's just going to be lots of leaves here. All right, so I'm going to go in for a little bit of a brighter yellow and we're going to just start dabbing here. And if you notice on a sunflower, there's lots of ridges. So I'd like to try to keep, you notice all the different ridges inside of it as if there's lines going up and down. So I'm going to try to create that by just going in the middle, but not entirely middle, they're in and out. And then on the tips too, and if your paint's a little wet, that's fun because it kind of moves around it. They don't move a ton, but they have lots of color. So as they're sitting there in the sun and they really move around a lot. If you ever thought to, gosh, it looks like I'm outlining, that's not a problem. Just take a light yellow and you can, you can, when we'll come back and we'll end up, see how you can just blend it in the lines. So you can always come back and make changes. Okay. And I'm going to do some yellow speckles in here. I've decided I'm going to imitate the sunflower that my brother gave to me. And I'm going to continue on with the lighter, the lighter colors. Although in the first sunflower I did, I did go to that dark bulb a little bit more. I do tend to be a little bit more of a traditionalist sometimes with that pure sunflower. And I don't know the history of sunflowers, of where the hybrid started and what is the actual original sunflower. That would be interesting to, to look up. One of the other benefits of sunflowers when you buy them at a farmer's market is that they typically last a long time than other summer blooms, which I love because I love to get a long life out of the flowers that, that I purchase. Okay, so we're continuing on. And you can see too that if you wanted to, you could absolutely do a couple more sunflowers. Um, you could also do more things in the background if you wanted to do lots of grass. And I'm so sorry if there's some voices in the background. Okay, so we're gonna get, make everything a little bit darker because usually I start with that light, right? That lighter sketch, watercolor sketch, and then I start adding in the depth. And you can use whatever green you want. I'm really just using one green that I'm spreading all around. Okay, Oop, and that one got in a little bit, that's okay. This one did too. And I've got these little guys which they're not quite, we need to get their little pointies on the ends so that make sure they look like they're, there we go, just a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna get a smaller pin, or paintbrush, I'm sorry, and I'm gonna start dabbing in the yellow around here. 
I'm going to want to create that contrast, so I am going to add some brown so we can tell where the middle starts and ends. I'm also going to go ahead and grab some brown, pick up some brown, and go ahead and create these my stalks, the sunflower stalks. And you see how the green that we included at the beginning, it just adds to that depth. Because most things are not one color, especially in nature, that's a little bit much. You're gonna see a lot of different colors. Okay, there we go. And that is a little bit of a thick stock, huh? I did not mean to make it that thick. So we're just gonna go like this and we're gonna clean it up a little bit and we'll end up fixing that in a little bit too. See, everything is fixable. All right, now this one has basically dried. I'm gonna come in a little bit closer. See over in this one where I have more of those variegated dots. I'm gonna take my small brush and we're gonna start doing that in here. Just a few on the inside and I'm gonna come over here and this is adding to the depth too. And sometimes I will say when I do multiple ones, for whatever reason, they can be a little bit more free spirited than when I do a single. Okay, I've got this one here. I've got some more dots right over here. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I know I need to give that just a minute to dry. I'm gonna come back over with a little bit of yellow and dip that into my leaves. And we don't want a solid we don't want a solid white background, so I'm gonna go ahead and just redo that stem in here. And this might be a good time just to add a little bit of color. Not a lot, but just a little bit. We don't really want to touch the flowers. In fact, I don't want to even, I'm going to take a big brush now, and I'm going to just take a little bit of yellow, and I'm just going to color just a little. Again, I'm just, I just don't want a, a white background, but on this particular painting, I don't want anything. I just want it to be all about the sunflowers. I'm not going to put in a sky or anything like that. So we'll put in a little bit of yellow under the stalks. If it ends up bleeding because um, we got too close, not a big deal. Like right in there. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do next, I'm sorry if my arm is in the way, a little bit up on the top, but not too much up here in the corner. I'll probably do some splattering at the end just to give it a bit of personality. This one's pretty whimsical, a little bit in there. And you'll notice too with the pointy brush, I really like this pointy brush because you can get in the, the little crevices really well. So hopefully that helps you see a little bit more. Okay, very good. So now, there we go. Okay, so now you're starting to see that come through a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm almost about to finish up here. I wanna put a little bit more color in and where I'm really wanting to put the color is I wanna add that brightness. So that really, that vivid um, orange color that you're seeing right in there, I wanna add that in. So I'm gonna take that red orange and again, if you have a red or a bright orange, it doesn't matter, take a little bit of that mix it in with your yellow, whatever yellow you're using. And so we have a nice vibrant color coming up. So this is kind of what mine is looking like right here. And I'm going to just start moving it like that. And I'm not painting in the petals completely. Okay, just like that. Okay. 
All right, very good. Isn't that, okay, so now I'm gonna back it up and you can see where we've got really nice triple sunflowers. Now what changes do we wanna make? Again, because it's wet, I don't wanna do too much to this one. I can take my little brush though. Let me see how many minutes. We are 20 minutes in. This is not bad for doing a sunflower painting because they really are, they're lovely, but they really are somewhat of a complex flower when you start looking at the different parts. I'm gonna go ahead right in here right in there a little bit more I'm gonna take this if you wanted to throw some you know some depth in here on your your petals that are have their bottom their face up to the Sun the lighter yellow is gonna be on top and you notice too that I'm blending as I go along as well. I'm trying not to create dramatic lines and I'm leaving a little bit of white as well. I'm gonna dab in some green and we're gonna see if it if it bleeds in. It might, but I'm gonna put just a little bit here. I'm gonna put a little bit down here. Again, just kind of help to create that border. Let it go a little bit into the stem here. A little bit right here. Now I probably will come back in and I may with this one touch up with a little bit of pen and ink because I think that would be really, really fun. So what that's going to look like, I can kind of, I will come over with this and what I would normally do, I'm going to move this in just a little bit. So with the ink is I'm going to come in, this one's all dry over here and so is this pen. So let me grab another pen. and we're going to come through and I'm just going to do little bits like that. So you see with the ink coming a little bit more. Just a little bit in here. You'll see too with these points are a little bit more dramatic. I let it dry, which is kind of the which is definitely necessity here. And I'm not going to do a ton of pen and ink, but just a little bit where I saw that I wanted to create a little bit of a distinguishing mark between the, um, the flowers. I'll move this over just a little bit. We're getting a little bit short on time. I don't like to keep these too long. So again, right over here. And then I might do a couple of dot, just do dotting. And this just, once again, creates the depth, creates the texture. right in there and then I can also come back in I might do just on a couple a little bit of the end work like that then I would come back in with my color and come go over it and yep that line's gonna fade a bit but I want it to because I don't want super harsh lines just little bits and come right back in here and just let these things just fade in again the darkness on some of the petals creates a really lovely depth and that's going to be just about it. I'm not going to do any more touch up with this guy. He is done and he is lovely. I think I really like the way he turned out. Okay. I hope you're really having fun with your sunflowers. Um, I'll have a completed final picture of the threesome over on, uh, most likely on Instagram and definitely at the blog at www.thecreativeseason.blog or dot com slash blog. If you like the sunflowers, let me know in the comments and we can certainly do some more uh, sunflower bouquets and different sunflower fields and variations of them. I hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.